So in order for us to be able to log in users or create account, we need to go back to our console for our base. So just go to where you created the app in our console. And to the left here, we have different services. So we want to go to authentication. So click there. And of course, you will have to say get started to start to, to start authenticating your users. Now, there are different ways or different forms of authenticating users. So we can use Google, Facebook, Game, Play, Apple, Microsoft, Twitter, and so forth, or phone or anonymous. We're just going to use the email and password. So click there and you will have to enable it. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to enable it to allow users to sign up using their email address and password. Okay, now you could also enable the the email link. We're not going to do that. So it's okay, as we have it here, right? Notice this is going to be inside of a sign in method. Okay, I'm going to go say save. And you can see now you should see the email and password enabled. If you go to our users, right, you should see that there is no users for this project yet. So as we authenticate or create new users here, uh, they will be added here. Right? So you could also add a user here. Let's go ahead and add one ourselves so we can see if we can log in. So I'm going to say me at me.com and add a password here. Tester, that's okay. I'm going to add this user. And you can see the user was added. Very good. So now, how do we then go through the process of let's start with logging in the user. Now we could go here and write the code for logging in, which is fine. But again, we are smart enough now to understand that it's always a good idea to take out these functionalities to put in a separate file that can be accessed from anywhere. Okay, so let's put all of that into a view model. That way we can just invoke the view model and have access to that. Now, this is going to be more apparent now, the reason why I have for each screen, I have a dedicated folder or a dedicated package. Because now, in our login screen, aha, there we go, I can now right click and add a new Kotlin class. In this case, I'm going to call this login screen view model as such. Look how neat this is. Now it's all inside of login package along with the reader login screen. Very handy. All right, let's get rid of some of these uh, that we are not really interested in seeing at this point. So we have a clean workspace there. Okay, so we're going to leave both of these. All right, so in this case here, I'm not going to use the uh, dependency injection because it's a very simple view model, but I still need to. Uh, invoke the view model as such okay to say that extends a view model so we can start using it I'm going to create a few variables here now I want to always have some sort of a state so I know if things are working to our advantage meaning if we are actually able to load stuff and we can look at that state a loading state for instance there are different ways to create a loading state or state of our data as it's connecting or receiving data from somewhere I'm gonna do it this way so this is a different way I'm gonna say val create a loading state here and I'm going to use this mutable state flow instead of just mutable state mutable state flow this mutable state flow and mutable state they are pretty much the same except with flow it's a little bit different because it deals with other things that mutable state may not deal with. So we're just going to go with mutable state flow here just because we want to. All right. Now, in this case, I need to pass something here to start off. So I'm going to pass this loading state and say dot idle. Now, we haven't created this loading state class. It looks like um, some sort of a static class of some sort. Yes, you're right. That's what it is. So bottom here, let me go ahead and create class it's going to be an enum like this let's extract to a different folder or file let's extract to a different file let's click there and i'm going to keep inside of a login that's fine and there we go we have our loading state so it's going to be an enum here we're going to put a few states that we may want in fact let's change this just a data class for now so it's a data class loading state 
and I said this is gonna be enum here it's okay we're gonna fix all of that so let's pass a few values here in the constructor the primary constructor it's gonna be status it's gonna be status which we haven't seen yet it's okay we're gonna get there and val I'm gonna say message it's gonna be a string type and make that nullable in fact I'm just gonna make it null right away all right, so now inside here, I'm going to create an enum class that will be status. So this will control, of course, will have a list of all the status. So I can just put a bunch of different status here. I can say, for instance, running, uh, success, failed, loading. We can get rid of running because loading and running is the same thing pretty much. And idle. Okay, so we can pass here different states that we want to keep track of. I'm going to create a companion object so we can actually uh, use it directly. So say companion object as such. And then I'm going to say val idle. In this case, it's going to be equal to loading state. And I'm going to pass the status of idle like this. You can do the same thing with others. You can add as many as you want. I can add all of them. In this case, let's say success. It's going to be equal to success. And pass our loading. status, loading, and so forth. So I could continue on and on to get, in fact, we're still here. Let's just do all of them. And say failed. It's going to be failed. So all we're doing here, we're creating this loading state class, which has this companion object here, which means just a, a static object that we can access directly. And when we access the idle value, we are going to load the state to say the state is idle. If success, we do the same and so forth. So this is just a good way for us to wrap our state, our data should say, into a state so that way we can check to see where we are in the process. All right, very good. So now you see that this looks good. So I'm saying loading state at first is going to be immutable state flow, and then it's going to be idle in the beginning. Nothing, meaning nothing is happening, it's just idle. That's the state. Now, next, I'm going to create a private var variable here, call this auth. Now, this auth is going to be a special one because it's going to be a Firebase, like such, auth object, right, from Google. And I'm going to set it to Firebase, get this Firebase Kotlin extension, and I'm going to get the auth like that. What I'm doing here is that we're invoking the Firebase auth, so we have access to, to the authentication library. Next here, I'm going to create another private variable. So I'm going to use another kind of internal private variable here called loading, and I'm going to use a different type. I'm going to say mutable live data. So I know I'm using different types here. In fact, as it is right now, I won't need this. I'm going to just get rid of that. I'm actually going to use internally the loading, really. I'm not going to use outside of this. So we can enable this if we want later to do something else where we can check the state, right? But for now, I'm just going to not use that, okay? I'm going to create a new one that I'm going to use internally. But nevertheless, this was good to learn how to at least uh, hook this up. All right, so we have mutable list live data. Again, another type here that allows us to hold this data and a reactive data that can be passed along because it has state and so it can be recomposed in our composable functions. And so the first file is going to be false, okay, for our mutable uh, live data. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to create then the interface variable that can be used somewhere else if we need to. I'm going to say loading. It's going to be live data as such. I'm going to pass the type. It's going to be just a Boolean. Now, we could have used mutable state. That's fine. I'm using different types, so hopefully we can see that we can interchange them or can use them. But usually you want to just pick one and go for it. All right, so we have live data here, and I'm going to set that to our loading or loading data. I'm going to set that into our loading there. So what I'm doing here is that this is going to be used internally, and this is a something a variable that can be used outside of this class all right now inside here i'm going to create a function uh, called create user with email 
and password. Yes, I know, a very long function name. And so what are we going to do here? Yes, we are going to be loading or creating the user with email and password. And also we're going to create another one. I'm going to function, we're going to create or login user, I would call it. Let's see, make sure. Let's call this sign in with email and password as such. Okay, so we have two of them. Let's start with this one here. I'm going to actually put that on top there. All right, so to sign in, sign a user with email and password, we need to pass a few parameters. First of all, it's going to be the email, it's going to be a string. And yes, you guessed it, the password, which is also going to be a string type as such. Very good. So what is that we're going to be doing here? Well, likely we do have our auth, which essentially allows us to get to our authentication library and get all these functionalities to log the user and do all sorts of things. So in this case here, we're going to use that. So I'm going to put inside of a try and catch because things could go wrong and catch as such and pass here ex for exception. Let's pass an exception as such. And if something happens, log d, I'm just going to pass the message. So ex dot message done. And this is going to be FB. Okay, so how do we sign in with email and password? Like I said, we can use, of course, our auth object there because the auth, look at that, it's a Firebase auth object, which is very helpful. I can go ahead and just say dot. Look how easy this is. I can go ahead and say sign in with with look at this all of these different methods we can call sign in with email and password that is exactly what I want and I'm gonna pass the email which is gonna be the email and pass the password as such and I can go ahead and say add on complete listener which in this case it's going to give me some information that I may need which is gonna be a task like that this object, oops, add on cancel, it has to be add on complete listener. Okay, there we go. So now we have this task if you have over, it's going to be an information that I may want to use. For instance, I can say that if task, actually, if you go task like this, you can see it's a type. It's a task type that contains auth result object, which means it's going to give the uh, information about whether this user was indeed logged in or not. So I can say if is successful, I have that variable there. If that's true, then we can do something. To do here, to do here, I'm going to say take them home. So we're going to take the users to the home screen. Else, well, we're out of luck. <laughs> Else, I'm just going to log D and say something that you know, pass in the task dot result and to string fb like this. Now all of this is actually not a good idea to put all of that just in a function like this, right? Remember, uh, because we're going to be dealing with going somewhere, meaning we have to go to our authentication, our Firebase here, we're connecting somewhere else in this case, we need to pass along all of this that we've written has to be passed inside of a view model scope, right? Because we need to pass that through a coroutine, right? That way we are able to run this process away from the main thread. Here I'm going to just put say equal to view model scope dot launch like that. And so everything is now going to be inside of this scope. So if you click here, let's see, make sure that yeah, all is enclosed there. Okay, so this will know exactly that it needs to run in a different scope, in a different coroutine, so that we don't run into issues.